My name is Rich Harrington, and welcome to another edition of Photoshop for Video. Today, we're going to look at a popular way to show your client a bunch of images so they can make selects. Now, we're going to make some contact sheets, and I've shown you this in the past, but I'm going to show you some new things I've learned that really make it easier to get this out to the client. Here's how. Now, one of the first things you're going to do is go ahead and actually launch Adobe Bridge. And Bridge comes with Photoshop and in the Creative Suite. And this allows us to go ahead and grab a bunch of images, etc. And we can just go in and see a whole folder of images. So if we have a bunch of images here, we could do a quick rename. I could simply select all these and say Tools, Batch Rename. And an intuitive dialog box comes up. So we can actually give this a name. I can call this Market Promo. And then specify that I would like it to use a sequence number with three digits. And I'll say start with 001. We could then have it preserve the original name into the metadata. Now this is very cool. What this means is even though you batch rename the file, when you look at the file's information or metadata, you could see the original name, maybe what was assigned by the camera or by the person who originally entered the images in. This is a good backup because if you actually rename the files and then find out later that the producer is referencing them by their original names, this will help you find that information pretty quickly. We're going to go ahead and say that's great. Go ahead and rename these in the same folder. Or if you wanted to be safe, you could even just say copy these into a new folder if you were concerned about the name. Once you're all set, you click rename and it goes ahead and quickly does it. Now, because we didn't choose to make a copy, it just put them in the same folder and renamed them. If you wanted to, you could again make a new folder and have it copy the images in there with the new name applied. Whatever works best for you and the safety net that you need. Now, with these photos all here selected, I'm going to go ahead and say Tools, Photoshop, PDF Presentation. And this will allow me to take all of these images and put them into a document. Now we could reorder these here and say make a multi-page document or make a presentation and tell it to automatically advance if we needed to, but I'm just going to leave this as a multi-page document and click save. Now when it does this here, it's going to ask me what do I want and I will call this flower book. And what's going to happen is it's going to put the individual image on one page of the PDF and save it out. I find this a really useful way if I'm doing a bunch of motion graphics and I'd like to give the client a workbook that they could then mark up their changes on. What I'll do is simply take a big motion graphics project and render out a still frame from each of the pieces or along the way and export that as a bunch of still images. I could then use PDF presentation to turn that into a book so the client can then go through and mark it up with a pen as they need to. And that works very well. Now, if you don't want to do it this way, you can actually combine multiple images to the single page as well. There you go. It's all done. If we go ahead and open that up here, we'll just open it up with Acrobat Reader. There's the Adobe Reader product. It'll take it open here. It'll be a multi-page document with one photo per page. And it's very easy for the client to go through and take advantage here and mark things up as needed. Now, if you want to put multiple photos on the page, that's pretty easy too. We could just switch back to Bridge here and say Tools, Photoshop, Contact Sheet. And this brings up a simple dialog box where it wants to know a few things. Set this to inches and make sure you're using an 8x10 page. The advantage of 8x10 is that this will easily fit when you print it out on a regular paper using standard printing sizes. You don't need a resolution of 300 though, that's pretty beefy. So I'd go down to 150 pixels per inch, which will look good on the screen, giving you a reasonable download time, but will also go ahead and produce an okay print if printed out to a laser printer. We'll say RGB color, we'll flatten it, and then we'll adjust this here saying, you know, let's have two columns on the page with three rows. And go ahead and include the file name as a caption. When I do this here, it's going to turn them all into individual sheets with the six images per sheet in the caption as the file name. Now the disadvantage here is that you're going to end up with multiple documents open. But that's okay. It's really easy to take these multiple pages and combine them into a single PDF. 
In fact, you use that same PDF presentation command. You can go ahead and say file automate PDF presentation and then simply say add the open files. Notice they're added, they're automatically put in the correct order and you could say save. We'll give this a name, we'll call it contact sheet and click save and then it's going to create the PDF. Remember, if you need to, you can actually add security like passwords to the document if you're concerned or the client wants to keep their images private. We'll go ahead and save that. The new PDF is generated very quickly. And then it's a piece of cake to switch on over and grab that and just open it up. There it is. Contact sheet is open. You see we have six images per page and the client can flip through and mark up what they'd like. Now, I find the use of contact sheets like this very useful, especially for documentary projects or projects with a lot of photographic sources. It lets the producer go through, mark up the photos. They can identify things like start here and pan to here in the photo, or let's do a zoom in on this person, or, you know, could you go ahead and fix this problem area of the photo? Having that tangible thing that they can mark up with a red Sharpie marker really helps them convey the ideas in their head and get them into yours. I hope you enjoyed this week's edition of Photoshop for Video. I invite you to check out our resource blog at photoshopforvideo.com, as well as the book of the same name. On the site, you'll find a ton of great resources, tutorials, bonus handouts, articles, blog posts, etc. And I invite you to come on by and check it out. Thanks again.